up during time when they try to take our creativity away from us, take our creativity and our religion away from us. So you gotta stay creative during time. Like under pa under pandemics, pandemics, that's when some of the greatest millionaires are created and generated, you know? So that's my thing. My goal with this is to do it mobile and come to you. You know what I mean? I come to you. I'm doing wedding parties. Whatever whatever is whatever the scenario may be, you know. But I'm just put into the place where I'm gonna make sure that I'm never unemployed ever again. You know? So that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. And Edward Sizzle Hands mobile salon is the new look. Actually, to be honest, I was supposed to get a, um, a mobile home like five years ago. I was gonna get a mobile home, but then you know I got into relations and stuff like that, and then you know, your life changes when you involve other people in your life, your life changes. So really I was supposed to do this like five years ago, but since the pandemic started, it just pushed me, it pushed me to do what I was supposed to do a long time ago and pushed me to do it right now. So, you know, like pretty much as soon as it, as soon as the, um, as soon as they closed us down in March, I was pretty much on this. Um, as soon as April got here, I got this, I've been having this since April. So, you know, and I've just been putting together piece by pieces and, you know, I already had my vision on what I wanted and I just put my vision into action. That's what most people, they don't put their vision into action. So they talk about what they want to do probably for like 20, 30 years instead of going out there doing it. You know, me, I believe that if you never tried it, you failed it. And I don't, and if I try it and I failed, then at least I accomplished something. You know what I mean? But most people, they ain't going to give themselves that chance to even fail because they don't even believe in themselves. You know? So if you don't believe in yourself, you already failed from the beginning to me. No, it don't start right here. This is just the beginning right here. This is the beginning of the platform. You know, I think I probably, I might be the first person out of dinner to do a mobile salon like this. You know, I see a couple cats with sprinters and everything. But like I said, you know, I wanted something different than a sprinter because at the same time, I want to be able to go places and I still want to have a bathroom and have access to whatever I need. You know what I mean? So this is just some, this is just the first one right here. I'm going to do, like I said, six months down from the line from now, I'm going to have another one. And I'm starting a chain of mobile salons. Ever since I had mobile salon, the personal experience. You know what I mean? So it's just it's just keeping me creative and keep on just thinking about other ways to be an entrepreneur. Cause me personally, can't nobody tell me how much my time is worth an hour. You know what I'm saying? So I don't care if it's forty dollars, fifty dollars. Can't nobody tell me how much my time is worth an hour. You know? So I just always been that way. I've been making two hundred fifty dollars since I was ten years old. You know, working with my grandfather, like. I'm glad that he instilled that work at the end, you know what I mean? But most people don't believe in themselves, you know? Like, you could tell a person, you know what, you could open up your own business, and you could be make $100,000 plus a year. They won't believe it, you know what I mean? But you tell them, oh, I give you $13 an hour to work at this job, they gonna go, go for that, because they feel like that's security, you know what I'm saying? But me, I feel like the sky is the limit when, on, on your cap space, and how much money you want to make, you know, people, people make it harder than what it is, you know. To be a, make $100,000 a year, it's like $275 a day. That's doable. That's easy. You know what I mean? But most people don't play the numbers game or they try to get too much of a percentage. You know, I play by small percentages. I take 10 here, 20 here, 30 there, 40 over there, and 60 over there, and end up with 200% while another person trying to take the whole 100% off the top, you know. You only get one chance to work a person in life, you know what I'm saying? So, I ain't trying to work you, I'm trying to work with you, you know what I mean? First, uh, man, I've been cutting hair since I was 12 years old. My barber, my barber was Big Mike. Michael Bryan got killed by the, past, uh, by the police officer way back in the day, and after he got killed, I started cutting my own hair at 12 years old. You know, when we was coming up, you didn't have to have a, a fade. Because fades didn't come out to the late 90s or early 90s or something. So you just had a bow cut. Put a shrimp string around your head and cut up to the line, you know. And I just always been doing that. My whole life has just been cutting, you know, just cutting, cutting. I already knew. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. I was blessed to know what I wanted to do at a young age. You know what I mean? I was blessed enough. I always know I wanted to do hair. You know what I mean? Because I had uncles that did hair and they always stayed fly. You know what I mean? 
It's like me, I do men and women hair, you know what I'm saying? But me, I'm my own person. Most people won't do women hair because they feel like it's a it's a stigma, cause you know what I mean? It's, are they gay or you know what I mean? Like, I can't worry about what a person think, you know what I mean? Because people gonna think about you bad about you anyway, you know what I'm saying? But I just knew that my whole life, I never, I never wanted to be like my dad, I never wanted to be like my uncles, I never wanted to be like nobody that was in my family. And then I done sit there and count millions of dollars with my uncles before, you feel me? And like, I still never wanted to be that because I've been horrified by the stuff that people glorify their whole life, you know what I mean? Like. Statistically, I'm not even supposed to be here having this conversation. You know what I'm saying? I'm the last. I'm the last of the brownies left. You know, they want to see me there in jail, but I ain't been to no penitentiaries, ain't been to no interrogation rooms, none of that. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I know what I want to do for myself, and I know what I want to be for myself. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I've been cutting hair pretty much all my life. So, I cut hair so fast, it's like, it's ridiculous. You know, like I could do what the other barbers do, but they can't do what I do. So that's why I only, it's, the competition is pretty much none. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I just I just wanted to just have my own way and my own avenue. You know what I mean? And like you know, like I say I come from I come from entrepreneurs. So it's only in me to be an entrepreneur myself. You know what I mean? I set trends. I don't follow them. Like my whole thing in life, when I told myself I'm only live three lifestyles in one lifetime. You know what I'm saying? From zero to 25, I did all the kind of dumb shit. From 25 to 50, I was gonna focus on my hair craft. 50 to 75, I'm going to preach my gospel, my word, you know what I mean, the church of what's happening now, you know what I'm saying, but just by me, you know, my whole life, you know what I'm saying, I've been visiting, I done visited the world, visiting penitentiaries, I done seen the world, visiting penitentiaries, you know what I'm saying, visiting my dad, he done been in almost every penitentiary in the, in the United States, you know what I'm saying, and I done visit that, I've been visiting penitentiaries since I was three years old, you know what I mean, like, I see how it goes, I, I see you do three years of, three years of grinding for 300 years, in the pen, the numbers never added up to me, you know what I'm saying? So, I know, I, I did I did have my fair share of the game, you know, I used to do all, go out of town, do all of that too. I'm just blessed, you know what I'm saying, just to be in a position where I never got caught. But my whole thing with myself was, it's like, it's just like you on the freeway, right? You on the freeway, you can't stay in the fast lane the whole time. You gotta know when to bounce in and out of the lanes. You gotta bounce in and out of the lanes. So I'll do something for a little while, boom, make my little money, bounce into something else. Do something else, you know what I'm saying? Just keep reinventing yourself. You know, you gotta keep reinventing yourself. Like I said, my goal was to live three lifestyles in one lifetime, you know? I've been up here at Lawrence and Covert for 12 years straight, and I never even imagined that I would be at one spot for that long, but you know, it, it showed me how to be consistent, and that's just, that's just pretty much the key to it. Consistency, man, consistency, and keep on growing and keep grinding. Get up early. Go home late, you know what I'm saying? I'm the first person here and the last person to leave sometimes. So, that's just how I live it, you know? Yeah, so my grandfather was a pastor, you know what I'm saying? Actually, my father's my father's father, you know what I'm saying, was a pastor. You know, and the, my grandfather raised me pretty much from like 10 years old to I was about 14 years old. I wanted to leave my grandfather's house because it was just too many rules. But then that was a bad decision for me because after that, I went to juvenile hall. I was in juvenile hall from like 15 years old to 18 years old. You know, that was enough time for me to do any, I don't need to go nowhere else after that, you know what I mean, so I'm glad that I had that, you know what I'm saying, but my grandfather, he gave my, my father and them the same opportunity, you know, he, but, you know, he, my grandfather took my father downtown LA lady, go get him a job, my grandfather said, my dad called back and said, daddy, I'm selling hair on, he ain't turned back since, <laughs> he ain't turned back since, and that's how it started, you know what I mean, but, like I said, I've been visiting penitentiaries, getting my house raided, that's why I wake up at five o'clock now. I gotta be there before. I gotta get up before they come. You know what I mean? But that's just all instilled in me. You know, so you know that's that's just what it is. You know, all I'm gonna do is just stay solid and be 100. Cause I don't need to beat me, and I don't never try to beat nobody else. I only beat me. You know what I'm saying? That's the easiest thing you can do is be yourself. I ain't trying to act super tough. I ain't trying to do this and try to do that. You know, and it's sad. It's sad for the simple fact that. Like, I could, I could call and ask somebody like for $50,000 for a business loan, they'd be like, nah, I can't get that. Well, I could get like 50 birds dropped off right now. Like with one phone call, I get like 50 birds dropped off and just set myself up for failure. But that's what they would want, you know?